All right, now listen up, please. Now, if you are a new player, if you can please go to the parking lot for induction. Uh, and if you're a returning low knee, uh, please join me over in the field. No, Mavadini, you're an existing player. You can go home. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome back to Manchester United. It's episode 9 of our England-only Manchester United series and we've sort of decided I think the goal is to try and win the Champions League. So we'll see how long it takes us to do that. But the January window is open. Today we're going to have the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final against Man City. And I'll catch you up on how the first leg went in just a moment. And then it is the team currently in fourth. It is Aston Villa that will be playing in the league. And to guarantee a Champions League berth next season, if we can beat them, it will go a long, long way towards doing that. But January, as I said, the window has opened. We have got two major outs. We knew Tellez was leaving 20 million to Spurs. So that has been confirmed. And Matic has also left left 3.3 million off to uh, Boca Juniors, just getting wages off. He was old. Yeah, it was just easy enough to get him out the door. So we've done a lot of business. So let's have a look and see the permanent signings that we've made. So the first one is a player that we knew was coming in, Sean Longstaff, £1 million we paid for him from Newcastle. A little bit of squad depth, uh, one of these that will <clears throat> should be able to just sell on in the future. Uh, I think it's a three or four year deal that he signed. And yeah, he'll be, uh, he'll be absolutely fine, I'm sure. And uh, just do the job if and when we need him to do it. 26 and a half uh, grand a week we're paying him. The next man in is Dale Fry. Again, we knew he was coming in. We signed him from, I want to say, Nottingham Forest, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, 2.5 million, potentially rising to 3 million if he plays 50 games, I think it is. So we'll see what becomes of him. Again, it's a two-year deal, 23 grand a week, emergency backup. It's just building that little bit of squad depth that we need. The next man is one that I'm excited about. It's Marcus Edwards, our left-footed winger. We finally got one in. Uh, he signed as a fringe player, 38 grand a week for four years. He is actually someone I think could establish themselves as a squad player, sort of more longer term. He sees a little bit more potential there for him. And uh, we signed him 14 million pounds, potentially rising to 17 million from Victoria de Guadalmez, or however you say that. And, I mean, he's, he's a very, very good attacking player so i am uh, i have high hopes for him i'm looking forward to see what he can do for us and the final transfer is not one you knew about but we have signed lewis cook from bournemouth um he is here again a three-year deal 54 grand a week as a squad player he is someone i think could have a more of a longer term uh role to play at the club i completely forgot about lewis cook i'll be honest he has an england cap and yeah, the scouts found him. He paid 8.5 million for him, potentially going up to uh, 10.25, which is still a bit of a steal, I think, for uh, for Lewis Cook. So we've signed him, as I say, from Bournemouth, and I think he comes in and replaces Ronaldo Vieira in that first team uh, sort of defensive midfield role. So we definitely, I believe, anyway, had an upgrade on uh, on there. So let me know what you think of the new signings. I'm excited by them, um, but we've not just signed some new players. We've called some people back from loans as well. So the first player that's come back is James Garner. He was on loan at Forest. He, had, again, has potential, and he's too good to be out on loan. We, we need him. We can use him. So we have called him back. And in hindsight... We probably didn't need to sign Longstaff knowing that uh, James Garner was coming back. But yeah, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you'll know I love a signing. So Garner's back, which is good. Also back is Reese Devine. This guy is just here to provide a little bit of cover at left back. Sort of a third choice behind Shaw and Charlie Taylor. Whether we need to sign Charlie Taylor permanently with Devine at the club... We probably do, but he's a useful player. He was on loan at St. Johnston uh, up in Scotland there, so we've uh, we've called him back. And the third player we've called back is Ethan Lard. Now, he is a very, very decent right back indeed and will provide very good cover for um, for one Basaka. He, I mean, he's, he's on par, I'd say, with Isaac Hayden as well. So we've got three really good right backs now. Now, Brandon Williams, we didn't have the option to recall him, unfortunately. Uh, but what this has all meant is that we've been able to... It just gives us a little bit of extra depth. And some of the, the players that aren't really level for the, ready for the first team level yet, we've been able to drop them back down to the under-18s. But we can go through that a little bit more uh, as we enter the games. But we've got some games to catch you up on first, starting with uh, West Ham in the Premier League. We took the lead when Greenwood picked out Kane. Ronaldo Vieira smashed in a second. And Kane got out third. Before Greenwood picked him out again to complete his hat-trick. 
and Andy Carroll added a fifth after half time. So a stunning performance, some great goals as well. Kane with the hat trick, Greenwood was really, really good out there. Ronaldo Vieira smashed one in and good old Andy Carroll off the bench to rest Kane and he got himself a goal as well. Really, really good performance this one. I can't speak highly enough of it. Really, really pleased. Next up, it was the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final. So let's see how we're standing coming into the second leg. We fell behind in first half stoppage time. And City got a second after the break. So there is very definitely work to do in the second leg. 2-0 down coming back to Old Trafford. Are we going to be able to overturn it? It's going to be very, very tough. But we should have a fairly strong side to go out for it. And the reason for that is because the only other game to catch you up on was against Sully Hole Moors in uh, the FA Cup third round. A non-league side. So we could afford to rest one or two for that one. We went ahead through Andy Carroll. Loftus Cheek crossed for Mavadini to get our second. And Carroll got our third. Before Laird crossed for Carroll to complete his hat trick. Garner got his first goal for the club with a little help from the keeper. And Ramsey completed the scoring. So this was an absolute bloodbath of a game. They were down to nine men as well. We could have probably put 20 past them, to be honest, if we tried. But I think we kind of clocked off in the second half. But the boos all around. Uh, Longstaff, Gardner, uh, Lard made the boos, as did Fry. Uh, Mavadidi. Now, Mavadidi, we have signed on a permanent deal. So he will be joining us. Uh, I think it was five million. I forget what we paid for him. But anyway, he is, uh, it wasn't too bad of a fee. He's, he's going to be joining us permanently. And the other one is Moeller as well. We had a 900k uh, fee in there that we could sign him for. So we've triggered that. So they'll both join us permanently at the end of the season. And to be honest, Moeller, there's a little bit of potential there. But we may just look to sell him on. We could probably sell him to another Premier League team for a, a tidy little profit, I would think. So that was the FA Cup. We have Brentford away in the next round. If we can go back, please, game. Uh, so that is that is what it is. Something to look forward to, I suppose. And let's have a look at what it all means for competitions. And we are uh, we're down there in third. We are four points off top of Manchester City, one point behind Liverpool. But crucially, we are ten points clear of Aston Villa in fifth. If we beat them today in the second game. I think we can just about declare ourselves in the top four because it's going to be very difficult for anybody to claw back 13 points unless we completely fall in a heap. But first up, it is the uh, Carabao Cup second leg of the semi-final. Now, speaking of Villa, that is who awaits the winner in the final. And, well, at 2-0 down, you tend to fear the worst here a little bit, don't you? So it's a defensive 4-3-3 we're expecting from them. That is how they played in the first game. And this is the team that we are sending out. So it is Henderson in goal. It is Shaw, Tamori, Maguire, and Hayden as the back four. Cook, it'll be his debut, I believe. Uh, starting as a defensive uh, midfielder there with Winks and Bellingham in front of him. It's Greenwood. It's Edwards debut as well with Kane up top. Uh, now, a few injury concerns. One, Vasaka is out for three weeks. So that's not ideal. A lot of the new guys and the guys we record from loan at Cup Tide, so they can't play either. And, uh, well, Sancho and Rashford are still injured as well. So, yeah, it's um, it's going to be tough. All right, so we can see the team sheets here. It looks as though City has put out a fairly strong team, doesn't it? If not their strongest team. So it's going to be tough. We need to show if I want to justify, put on a show. I can get on board with that. It's, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Edwards and Cook go. As I said at the start, they are the two guys I think do have a future. Uh, sort of beyond beyond the initial sort of setup time as we try to, to transition basically to just English players. Uh, I do like having a left-footed winger out there in Edwards. And Cook is he's very decent, isn't he, as that deep-lying playmaker. And he can tackle as well. He's an upgrade on Ronaldo Vieira, who will stay at the club. Uh, he, he, I think, is he's very good backup at this stage of uh, of our journey with, uh, with the team. So, yeah, I'm fairly happy with those two. I'm fairly happy with everything that we've done, uh, that, we did, that we've done, or did. That's how you get to did, or did. Or I don't know what I said. Anyway, let's not... I'm, I've, I'm full of cold, so I don't feel great. I can't think straight. <laughs> so there's going to be a little bit more gibberish than usual. Jesus Christ, guys, get rid of it. And, well, I mean, what we can't afford to do is concede the first goal here. Now, there are no goals, away goals, I should say, in the Carabao Cup. 
So the fact we didn't score away and if City were to score, it's not basically the end of the tie. Uh, you know, a 3-1 win would be enough for us to uh, go to extra time. But we don't. We don't want to be falling behind, do we? Let's give them some encouragement. And let's see what we can do here. We haven't had the ball yet, which is very reminiscent of the first leg, if I'm honest. We're just not quite... Oh, Bellingham's intercepted that. Can he play in Greenwood? He's got a little bit of space in front of him. Kane's getting forward. Can he pick him out? He can. It's Harry Kane. Oh, what has happened there? It's a block. I thought... <laughs> Absolutely whiffed his shot. But uh, no, it was blocked. We've got the corner. Short to knock it in. It's a good one. It's bouncing around in there. But Edison claims it. A little bit of luck there, perhaps, for Manchester City. Fernandinho got sent off in the first leg. I'm a little bit surprised he's able to play this one. Another corner. Sure. Again, it's a good one. It's Oh, it's a penalty, is it? It could be a penalty. It's a handball, I believe. It's surely going to be given. Or else we could have had a shot from the edge of the area. It is going to be given now. Harry Kane will take. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. He's having a wonderful season in front of goal for us. It's the first time I've ever seen Harry Kane score goals for my team. He sends Edison the wrong way. And that is a 17th goal already this season for Harry Kane. And we're in early January. Let's give him some praise. And suddenly there's just one goal in this. And you look at this first team now. And that's not a bad team, is it? Can we get this away, please? Boys, thank you. Oh, just over. The weakness, I think, is still in defence. Um, I mean, Maguire, Tamori, as far as English defenders go, that doesn't get too much better than that, I wouldn't have thought. But the rest of that team is not bad. Maybe Winks and Cook in midfield could be upgraded on. But again, if we're just looking at English players, that's not too bad. And again, it's away. Isaac Hayden with the header. Can Bellingham go and stick a foot in there? No, not quite. Don't give away the foul. Don't give away the foul. Oh, it's given away the foul. Oh, Jude. Hey, Jude. Don't take him down. Oh, come on, Hendo. Come on. We don't want to have all our work from this first half undone. And he's gone the wrong way as well. De Bruyne ties it up on the night. He's 17th goal of the season as well, which is probably more impressive, actually, than Harry Kane, isn't it, given the position that he plays? And it's 1-1. We're back to where we started. We need two goals. Let's encourage them. We're looking anxious. There we go. That's fired them up. But uh, we've got a lot of work to do in this second half to rescue this now. Let's put on a show. I can just about get on board with that. We'll pump our fists, say we have faith in them. How are the debutantes going? We haven't seen Edwards, have we, at all? And Cook is doing okay, but you wouldn't say he's setting the world on fire. Can we do anything a little bit different? I wonder if we look to exploit the flanks here. Let's do that. Let's look to get, uh, to get Edwards involved. We know he's a good player. Well, his attributes suggest he's a good player anyway. And if they've got their wing backs, maybe we can pin them back a little bit if we're uh, if we're getting forward there. Here we go. Marcus Edwards. First time we've seen him on the ball in the Manchester United shirt. He's into the penalty area. Marcus Edwards has a shot. It's blocked. It's Bellingham. Oh, Jude Bellingham makes up for his error to give away the penalty. And it is 3-2. 2-1 on the night. And Bellingham gets his first for the club. I think that said. No, I thought he already had one, but maybe not. Edwards did well there, didn't he? The shot is blocked. It comes out to Jude Bellingham, and that's a stunning finish. Edge of the area, and it is 2-1. We need one more goal, and we've come back for a kickoff highlight. Come on. Can we win that back? No, not quite. Can Winks get a foot in? Are they going to go and break our hearts again? Ball forward, Isaac Hayden is there, brings it down. It's tackled away. Maguire can't get to it, and De Bruyne muffs his shot. Focus, boys. Focus, focus, focus. Cook to Bellingham. Back to Maguire. Hayden. Forward there for Greenwood. Bellingham with the ball forward for Harry Kane. Harry Kane's in. Can Harry Kane find the back of the net? No. Edison with the save. And here come Manchester City now. Can Winks get a foot in? Not quite. Come on, Edwards. You've got to go chase your man there, mate. Cook goes across. Can he get a tackle in? 
No, he can't. Walker's got a long, long way. Ball back for Sterling to Grealish. Don't do it, Jack. It's cleared away and it's end-to-end -end stuff. We still need a goal. We still need a goal. Let's encourage. Luke Shaw's looking aggressive. And at what point do we start to change our shape a little bit? Oh, it's twice, three times. Harry Kane sticks it away for his 18th. And it's 3-3 three, three on aggregate. 3-1 on the night. And it is tied up again. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. It's a stunning performance from our Manchester United side. And it was third time's a charm. Maguire's was blocked. Tamori's was blocked. Kane had an open goal. And there was no stopping that one. Let's praise them. And can we go and win this now? There's 10 minutes to play. Hayden with a throw. Cook. Cook with a ball deep into the area. It's Marcus Edwards. Oh. A big chance to be an instant hero. And this has been a really, really good second half performance from us particularly. And exploiting the flanks is obviously something we like to do. It's the Manchester United way. And it is going to be... Oh, is there, is there away goals? No, there is no away goals. I didn't think there was away goals. You've done well, boys. You've done well. Keep going. Get the result you deserve. Now, subs are probably something we should think of in extra time, isn't it? We don't really want everybody going the full game here. Maguire's not having a great game. Uh, what can we do? Greenwood's not having a great game. Who's tied? Bellingham and Winks are tied. We could probably do with some fresh legs in midfield. Uh, but... oh. Of course, the issue that we have is beyond the first team, there's not the greatest depth going around, is there? So let's have a think about this. Let's take let's take Winks off for Loftus Cheek. Let's take Greenwood has not had a great game. Let's take him off for Mavadidi and leave it at that for now. Let's give him another focus. I don't like that the entire back line appears to be aggressive. That's <laughs> it's got me slightly nervous. Half time and extra time. Can we demand more? Or are we going all the way to penalties? And that is going to absolutely destroy the episode. <laughs> all right, let's have a quick look at penalty takers. Okay, hopefully we're not doing this too early. But we're bringing on Carol and Short Tire for Cook and Tamori. Uh, we're kind of putting together a little bit of a defensive mismatch. But hopefully... Subs won't go on too quickly, and we'll get there. We do. Okay, so it's a penalty shootout. Just stay calm, back yourselves, we'll be fine. I think we'll go with that. And see how we go. Kane, who's already got one penalty today, of course. Can he go and stick away a second? Wembley on the line, and he does do just that. Next up, De Bruyne, who's already got a penalty as well, of course. Ken Henderson, second time of asking, get a save from him. Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. De Bruyne hits the post. Can Marcus Edwards on the boot give us a, an, an actual advantage here? Edwards. He can. He can. We're 2-0 up. And are we about to overturn this 2-0 deficit, which I've got to be honest, thought we were no chance of. Dybala now. Oh, Henderson was close, but couldn't quite get there. Jude Bellingham steps up, gave away the penalty, of course, that right now is costing us Wembley. Can he stick his penalty away? He can. And that is 3-1, and a save now would be huge from Henderson. It's Gundogan. Come on, Hendo. Come on, Hendo. Yeah, he's gone the right way, but he can't quite get there, and there is nothing in it. It's Andy Carroll. We brought him on to take a penalty. He's doing the extended run-up. Andy Carroll. Oh, he sticks it away. It's 4-2. They have to score now. If they miss, we win. And it's Jack Grealish. Come on, Jack. Just send her into the stands for me, mate. Oh, could we have a cup final first season? And will it be against Villa, which would be heartbreaking for me? Come on, Grealish. No, he's too good. He sticks it away. All right, if we score this, we win. Who's the man stepping up? Who's the hero going to be? It is Short Tire. Another one that we brought on to take a penalty. Is 17 too young to have this sort of pressure on him? 
<laughs> Come on, short tire. You're here because I believe in you, mate. Come on. Stick this away. Send this to Wembley. Short tire. He does it. And we are going to Wembley. We've beaten Manchester City from 2 0 down in the first leg. That is absolutely superb. I cannot believe have done that. Very, very nicely done. So there we go. Manchester United book their place at Wembley. We come roaring back to win on penalties. And Kane needs a rest. I think I need a rest. Edwards has uh, made his debut, as had Cook. Kane, top of the pops for Manchester United with a double. And, well, that is... I said at the start, didn't I? And it's, it's we're getting better and better the longer that we go and the more transfer window uh, time we have. Our first team is good. And there's the final. Villa versus Manchester United. Yeah, the first team's good and we've proved it there. Let's see how we do now. We're going to have a preview of the final because we're off to... Are we playing at Villa Park? Anyway, we're facing Villa next in the league. Okay, welcome back. Let's uh, try and get the league campaign well on track here. If we can beat Villa, then I'm, as I said at the top of the episode, that should be that. Uh, let's have a look at what we're expecting from them. We're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation, and we are basically matching them up with a heavily rotated side. So Henderson in goal, Taylor, Fry, first look at him with Holgate and Laird as the back four. Garner and Longstaff in midfield. Lingard, Loftus, Cheek and Sancho, who's back from injury. Probably won't get 90 minutes out of him, but we'll get something. And it's going to be Mavadidi getting in the start up top as a striker. I think there's a very decent striker in there, possibly better than Andy Carroll, though Andy Carroll has done exactly what we wanted him to do when we signed him. But I think this is maybe a little bit too good of opposition for him. All right, so we can see the team sheets here. Frank Lampard. We can't have Lampard and Gerrard in the same club, of course. Frank Lampard in this world has taken over as the Villa manager. Uh, a lot of young players on the bench there, it looks like, and Ashley Young as well. He's technically, I guess, a young player. <laughs> <laughs> even if not by age let's show them that the recent praise is justified and yeah i mean there's always a chance of complacency after a game like we just had all right and here we go here we go this would be mission as i say mission accomplished in the league i don't think we're going to win it but fourth would be ve or top four i should say would be very very nice and we've got uh the things back the front there again we went with a more attacking team basically because I want to. I don't know. I figured, you know, let's go and try and score some goals. I think without Kane up top playing as that complete forward, I found that, uh, especially Carroll, looks quite isolated up there uh, if we're playing him as a target man. And I suspect, I mean, Mavadidi's not really good enough to be able to play as a, as a complete forward. So I suspect something similar would happen. Only Watkins is in behind here and Henderson makes the save. Let's just give them an encouragement. It is a little bit tough coming into the back, you know, into this game with the backup team, more or less. But Manchester City, extra time as well. No of those players were really able to, to back up. And of course, we are in the, the December, January period, which means we have games coming thick and fast. I think, although it's a weaker team, I think a fresher team will, will actually be a benefit for us here. Longstaff with the, over, the overlapping run of Taylor. Eventually, we find him. Can he whip across in? Longstaff, Sancho. Sancho for Loftus-Cheek, and Martinez makes a good save. Here we go. Taylor with the corner. Decent one. Back post. Mings, I think it was, that got it away. Lingard brings it down, though. Lingard into the penalty area. El Ghazi cleans it up, hacks it clear, and it's going to be the end of the highlight. As I th I'm not sure who it was back there. Was it Loftus-Cheek that was uh, sweeping back? give them some more encouragement before half time i'm not sure a draw would be a terrible result here actually because it keeps that gap to fifth to ten points so it might be one of these where it's it's maybe not the worst thing uh you've done nothing wrong we've dominated possession so far keep going let's just go with a keep going go and prove yourselves here boys we do have the option obviously of andy carroll Mavadidi was nervous. Now, the other thing we're going to watch is Jaden Sancho just coming back from injury. It may not be a game we want him to play uh, 90 minutes in. The option... Well, Mavadidi would usually go over there, wouldn't he? Sancho can't quite win it back. Cash has got free of Sancho down that right-hand side for them. Can Longstaff get a tackle in? Not quite. Goes, puts pressure on McGinn. Oh, Loftus Cheek can't quite win that back. Come on, somebody get a foot in here. Garner on a booking is slightly concerning in the role he's playing. Where, oh, Watkins. Is it offside? I don't think it is. 
And we've been sprung by Ollie Watkins. It's the 100th league goal of his career. And in front of the Holt end, Villa are 1-0 up. Um, I'm wondering if we... Oh, it's a good ball through too, isn't it? Laird must have been... Was it Lard? Laird? Laird it would be, wouldn't it? Let's just played him on there, I think. All right, so what we might want to do here, let's raise up our tempo. Oh, we are putting pressure on them. Never mind, I thought we were sitting more compact than that. Laird wins it back. Here we go, Mavadidi, wide there for Lingard. Jesse Lingard could be in here. Can Jesse Lingard find a finish? No, he cannot. And it's getting to the point where we might need a little bit of a rethink here, mightn't we? All right. All right, so we're going to make two changes. Andy Carroll is going to come on for Mavadidi. Short tie is going to come on for uh, what's his face for Sancho out there. I just don't want to risk another injury for Sancho. Not that he's playing badly. I just don't want it to be any worse than it has to be in terms of, you know, getting another injury out there. Let's, uh, they're looking nervous and that's not great, is it? Can we encourage them? Oh, it's had another save from Martinez. We're going to have another corner. It's still Taylor out there to take it. And can we get this equalizer? Which I don't think would be undeserved. We've been the better team, it feels like. And that is just passed from Fry, I think it was. And, well, are we having another situation that's becoming a little bit of a uh, habit lately of one good game, one bad game? Henderson with a goal kick. Fry comes forward. Longstaff back to Fry. Holgate gets it, exchanging passes with Gardner. Gardner, Garner even, that's that's the cold talking there. Carroll can't keep it back. McGinn wins it. And here come Villa again. They do look a decent side, don't they? Where's this in real life? Watkins is in again, and Watkins. Well, that was poor, wasn't it? We've got away with one there. But despite having at least half the game leading XG, we've, uh, well, we've been beaten there, haven't we? And been beaten disappointingly as well. I mean, in many ways, we got Martinez there, didn't we? He made some really good save. Watkins got sprung in behind. And that just about ends the league bid, doesn't it? If it was ever on, because that's seven points. And it's seven points behind us as well. That keeps that pressure on. So far from ideal as Villa stun Manchester. It'd be just my luck. Villa never beat Manchester United, but when I'm in charge, there you go. Uh, but that'll do it for today, guys. If you have enjoyed that, make sure you hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. We got ourselves to our cup final where we will be playing Aston Villa again. So we will play a stronger team, I would think. Although if we have a look at the fixtures, it doesn't come at a great time. We've got three episodes, I think we're going to have to do back to back to back of just epic, epic games. Chelsea versus Milan, the first leg of the Champions League, will be next episode. Then it'll be Villa in the AFL Cup final and Manchester City at home in the derby. And then it will be Liverpool away. We go to Anfield. And then it will be the second leg against AC Milan. I don't think, well, unless it's absolutely dead and buried, but I can't see that being the case. So, yeah, three episodes of just basically <laughs> the fixture run from hell. Uh, but there's a trip to Wembley, some football from the Champions League, and uh, a couple of big games in the Premier League. It's going to be exciting times. Until then, guys, I've been Aussie Bell, and thank you so much for watching. Take care.